everybody. Welcome back. My name is Bree. Thank you for joining me for another tutorial video today. Today I'm going to share with you how I created this super simple round bottom bucket bag tote bag. Now this bag was created for my daughter to be used for her knitting and crochet project bag, but this bag has a ton of different uses. You could use it for a farmer's market tote bag, a lunch bag for work or school, a sewing notions bag, or just to take in the car full of items that you may need throughout the day, a bottle of water, some extra snacks for yourself or for your kids. It really is a versatile bag. I constructed this bag with an open top just to make it easy to get items in and out. I only put one pocket in there. The pocket is totally optional. So if you head over to our website, and I will put the link for that in the description box below, you can print out a copy of the sewing pattern that you're gonna need, as well as the directions. Let's grab our supplies and let's get started constructing this super easy round bottom tote bag. So let's go ahead and get started by printing out our bag bottom pattern, our pattern labels, and the cutting instructions for this bucket bag. Grab a pair of scissors and let's cut out our pattern. You're gonna to wanna to cut around the outside of the black line. A lot of you have asked if you need to cut out this test square that is in the corner of the paper patterns that I create. This test square is for you to either cut out and measure it or use a tape measure and measure it. And when you print your pattern out, this square should measure one inch by one inch. This is just gonna mean that it printed out to the right size. You're gonna wanna have your printer set to 100% and not to scale. This will ensure that the pattern prints out correctly. You're also going to need some exterior fabric a coordinating interior fabric, some fusible foam, a ruler, scissors, or a rotary cutter, some sewing pins or clips, some cotton webbing for the handles of your bag, and some kind of fabric marking pencil and or pen so we can mark quilting lines on the exterior of our bag. Now let's go ahead and get our fabric cut. Grab your fabric that you're gonna be using for the exterior of your bag, and you're gonna cut two pieces, 14 inches long by 12 and a half inches high. And you need two of those. Then you're gonna take a piece of fabric, you're going to fold it in half, to create your bag bottom. As indicated on the pattern here, you're gonna place this line on a fold of fabric, cut out your template, and when you open it up, you'll have your bag bottom. You're also gonna need one of these from your exterior fabric. Then take your interior fabric, you're gonna cut the same pieces. 14 inches long, 12 and a half inches high, and you're going to need two of those for your bag interior. Then cut your bag interior bottom from your pattern piece. You're also going to need a strip of fabric. This is going to be for the binding of your bag. So you can use your exterior fabric, your interior fabric, or a completely different coordinating fabric. It's really up to you. This strip is cut three inches wide and is 35 inches long. After you have your fabric cut, you're gonna cut your fusible foam. I've cut two pieces, 14 and a half inches wide by 12 and a half inches tall, and one piece of fusible foam for the bag bottom. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fuse our exterior pieces of fabric to our fusible foam. Okay, we have our ironing board out. We have all of our pieces that we're going to need to fuse. 
And for this part of the project, I would recommend using a non-adherent pressing surface. So I have my applique pressing sheet out. I'm gonna go ahead and take a piece of fusible foam that we have cut, lay that on top of your pressing surface, line up your pieces on your fusible foam, and then use your iron to fuse them together. We've just finished fusing the exterior piece of fabric to our fusible foam. And if you have any excess left over like I do here, you'll wanna go ahead and take a pair of scissors and trim that up when we're all finished. Take one of your other pieces of fusible foam and an exterior piece. Line up the pieces and fuse these as well. And you're gonna do that to both pieces for your exterior bag. So now you should have your three bag exterior pieces fused to your fusible foam. Go ahead and trim up any excess pieces of foam that are sticking out past your fabric. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our pieces of exterior bag, we're gonna put them right sides together, and we're gonna sew along one of the 12 and a half inch sides using a half an inch seam allowance. Then we're gonna press this open and we're gonna go ahead and mark it with our lines that we want to quilt. So while we have our iron out and it's hot and ready, let's go ahead and take that strip of fabric that we made for our binding top that's three inches wide and 35 inches long. And we're gonna go ahead and put it wrong sides together. We're gonna fold it in half and give it a press down the length of the fabric. This is gonna create the binding top for our bag that we're gonna use later when we construct it. So go ahead and press that, and then we'll set it off to the side for later. Let's head over to our machine and sew our two exterior pieces together. All right, now we're all ready to sew our two exterior main pieces together. One thing I would like to add here is that if you are using a print that has a specific direction on it, you're going to wanna to make sure that those two pieces are facing the same way. And what I mean by that is this floral print that I'm using for this bag here has these large flowers and they're facing up. So I wanna make sure that when I sew this piece to my other piece, that these flowers are facing the same direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those right sides together. So if you open it up, you should be able to see that these flowers are facing the same direction, which is exactly what you want. If you are using a print of fabric that is non-directional, you don't have to worry about this step. That is just something I wanted to add extra because it is something that you'll notice once your bag is constructed if this piece was facing up and this was facing down. So go ahead, put those right sides together and along one of the 12 and a half inch sides, we're going to sew a seam back stitch at the beginning and end of each line of stitching. Head over to your ironing board and you're gonna wanna open up that seam and just give it a quick press. Then we're gonna head to a cutting mat and with a ruler and our marking pen, we're gonna mark our lines that we wanna quilt on the exterior piece of our bag. All right, so take those two exterior bag pieces that you just sewed together, and we're gonna go ahead and just press the seam open so it lays really flat. This is just gonna make it a lot easier to quilt. Before you begin your actual quilting lines, you can also sew a seam a quarter inch on each side of this seam where you put your bag together. This is just gonna also make sure that that lays really nice and flat. Again, this step is completely optional. Um, I usually prefer to top stitch down the sides of each one of my seams. I feel like it gives the bag a more finished look, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, and then we'll get our bag marked for quilting. So 
So this is the part of the sewing project that is completely optional. If you do want to quilt the exterior of your bag, you're gonna need some kind of marking pen. Now this is just a white chalk pencil that I'm gonna be using today. Uh, the white is gonna stand out really good against this dark green background, so it's gonna be easier to see. You're also gonna want a ruler. And you're only gonna need a ruler if you're doing straight line quilting, which is what I'm gonna be doing on this bag today. It's your bag exterior marked as well as your bag exterior bottom. Now we can head back to our machine and begin quilting. All right, we're at our machine and we're ready to get this quilted. Now you have a lot of flexibility when you do uh, your quilting on the exterior of your bag. So you can use a contrasting thread that's really gonna stand out and be really, really noticeable, or you can use a thread that is gonna blend in so it's not as noticeable. I really don't want the thread to be uh, what stands out on this bag. I really want the fabric to kind of pop once the quilting lines are done, kind of give it a trapunto effect. So I'm gonna use some green thread. We're gonna go ahead and get the exterior of our bag quilted as well as the exterior bag bottom. And then we'll start putting our bag together. For this step, you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you have extra bobbin thread wound 
an extra thread on hand if you're going to be doing a lot of free motion quilt work. Quilting on the exterior of a bag or clothing uses a lot of thread, so you're just going to want to make sure you have that out and ready to go. Now let's go ahead and get this quilted and we'll quilt the bottom as well. All right, now we just finished quilting our bag bottom in our exterior sides. So go ahead and take that exterior piece and you're gonna fold it right sides together, matching up those side seams over here. You're gonna, so take your bag exterior, fold your pieces right sides together, and we're gonna go ahead and sew that half an inch seam all the way down the other side. pin and clip if you want or just sew. If you top stitch the other side, this is when you'll want to turn your bag so the right side is facing out. And then you'll want to top stitch along this side as well. If you didn't do this step to begin with, you can totally skip this. If you see any extra threads, you can trim those up now as well. bag should now be pieced together on the sides. It's top stitched if you chose to do that part. Now we're going to go ahead and flip this so the right side is facing out again. Grab your bag bottom and let's go ahead and get this attached. Using clips or pins, you're going to want to find the centers of your bag bottom Match one of those center lines to the side seam of your bag and clip or pin. Rotate to the other side, again using the center of your bag bottom. And clip together. And you're just going to do this the entire way around. You're just going to pin so the bag bottom is attached to the exterior. So I typically clip and or pin in four points and then ease the rest in. How you choose to attach this is really up to you and what works best for you. Sometimes these round bottom bags can be a little bit tricky, but just take your time and ease it in. All right, now after some easing, I've gone ahead and I've completely clipped on my bag bottom to my exterior sides. Now using that half an inch seam allowance, we're gonna go around and we're gonna sew around this bottom of our bag to attach it to the exterior sides. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All 
All right, your bag bottom should be attached to your exterior bag sides. And if you want to, you can go ahead and kind of trim up this edge a little bit so it's not so bulky, or you can leave it, the bag will stand up and lay just fine if you don't trim it. Um, if you are gonna use scissors and trim up some of this excess fabric, just be careful that you don't trim through that line of stitching that you just did to attach your bottom to your sides. I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine. You're gonna wanna turn this right sides facing out. Go ahead and just use your fingers and kind of poke that seam out all the way around the base of your bag. All right, now that this part is constructed, we can go ahead and set this off to the side and let's go ahead and put together the interior liner of our bag. I've matched up the 12 and a half inch sides of my two interior bag pieces. Go ahead and stitch a seam down that 12 and a half inch side. Flip your fabric and sew down the other 12 and a half inch side. You have the option here as well to open this up and top stitch along the side of those seams that you just created, or you can go ahead and attach your bag bottom. For me, I'm going to go ahead and top stitch on both sides of this interior. I think it gives it just more of a finished look. Again, the step is optional, it's not necessary. All right, so I've just finished top stitching down the sides of my bag. Go ahead and take your bag interior bottom. We're gonna attach this with either pins or clips and then we're gonna sew this on. If you want your bag to have even more stability, you can take these interior fabric pieces and you can fuse these with a light fusible like SF-101. Um, it's not necessary because of the fusible foam, but if you want to do that, you can do that as well. All right, the bag bottom for the interior is attached to the exterior pieces. Now we're gonna set this off to the side and it's time to get our material out that we're gonna be using for our bag handles. And let's get our bag marked for the placement of those. Okay, so for this part of bag construction, you're gonna to wanna to have your webbing material that you're gonna use for your handles and the exterior of your bag. You're also going to need a marking pen or pencil of some kind. Again, I'm just using my chalk pencil because it makes it so I can see the marks I'm going to make on the exterior. And you're going to need a ruler. Now this part is really personal preference. I'm using two inch wide cotton webbing for my handles today. And each one of these pieces is cut to an 18 inch length. You can make these longer, you can make them shorter, and you can use different uh, thickness and widths of webbing. It's really up to you. This is what I'm using today. So I always like to go ahead and just kind of take the straps and play around with strap placement. I like to see how far I want the straps apart, how far I want them from the sides. So then using your ruler, just kind of give it a measure to see how far apart these straps are. So currently how I have this strap setting on the top of this bag, there's a five inch gap 
in the center and about a three inch gap on both sides. And I kind of think that's where I'm going to place this strap. So just as a side note before we start actually stitching on our handles, if you want to change your thread at this point and use a thread that is going to blend in with this cotton webbing, you'd want to go ahead and do that now. If you want to keep the same thread on, just note that you are going to see that stitching on this handle and that's okay too. It just is really personal preference. For me, I've gone ahead and I switched my thread over from my green to a light taupe color so it will blend in and you won't see the stitching. I have my two pieces of webbing here and the first thing that we're going to do before we attach these to our bag is we're going to take and we're going to fold this rough end over about a half an inch and we're going to stitch. You can kind of finger press this down a little bit, whatever works best for you. You can pin it if you want. I'm just going to start sewing. I'm going to stitch this handle in two places and when I attach this to my bag I'm going to follow those exact same lines of stitching to attach it to my bag. Trim up your threads then go ahead and do this for the remaining three ends that you have for your straps. Okay, we've sewn up all four ends of our straps, so the raw edges are folded under. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make this a rolled handle. You don't have to do this, you can definitely leave it flat and attach it like this, but I prefer the rolled handles. It feels a lot better when you're holding it, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. So grab a marking pen. Go ahead and take that strap, fold it in half to find the center. Place a pin. You can mark it with your pen if you want. I'm just going to stick a little pin in it to kind of indicate the center, like so. And now you're going to want to decide how much of a roll you want on your handle. I think for this particular one and how long the handle is, I'm going to do a 5 inch roll. So you can mark it again with a regular pen. You can take some sewing pins. So you're going to open that back up. Now you have your pins in place. You're going to take this strap, fold the other long end up to meet this one. And then at this point you can clip it and you're just going to clip down the entire length from this pin to the other. Right now I'm just going to stitch from here to here, again back stitching along the way to really reinforce that strap. Okay, you've just constructed one rolled handle. Go ahead and do the same thing to the other handle and then we'll get them attached to our bag. Now we have both of our bag handles constructed, so let's go ahead and attach these to the exterior of our bag. Once the exterior of the bag is constructed with the handles on, we'll insert the liner and baste stitch that in. Using the markings on the exterior of your bag as a guide for your handle placement, 
you're going to go ahead and you're going to take your handle, making sure it is not twisted, and lay it with the nice seamed edge facing up. You're going to want to keep the end of this handle at least an inch from the top. This is going to give you room to attach your bag liner as well as bind it later. You can use your quilting lines as a guide if you did straight lines like I did here. So I've got my handle placed here. For this part you're going to want to use pins. It's really going to make sure that it's secure. So go ahead and attach that. I like to do this in a couple of places just to make sure that the handle does not slip around while I'm stitching it on. I have my gridded sewing mat on my um, sewing table right now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch this handle on because I don't want the pins scratching up the surface of my sewing table. So you can get really creative with attaching these. You can make a little gridded X pattern on here. I'm just going to use the lines that I've already stitched as my primary lines to hold these down. And then you can go ahead and add more um, if you want to. Again, this is the really fun part of bag making and bag construction, is that you can really play around with the details. Your handles are attached. Go ahead and open up that bag. Then you're going to grab your interior liner. You're going to leave it so the wrong side of the fabric is going to face the foam. So drop that in. Again, you're going to find your side seams. Open up this side seam over here, and you're going to lay this side seam on top of this side seam and either pin or clip. Like that. Turn your bag, find your other side seam, again opening up this one, and nestle this side seam right on top of that one pin or clip and you're going to go ahead and do this around the entire top of your bag. We just finished clipping the interior of our bag to the exterior. Now at this point before we baste the interior to the exterior of the bag you can change your thread back over to the main thread color that you use to construct your bag as well as quilt it or you can leave um, whatever color thread you use to attach your bag handles. It's really up to you. Um, you are going to see this line of stitching on the inside of your bag once we attach our binding. So if you want to change your thread color, now would be a good time to do that. For me, I'm going to go ahead and leave it. The cream color thread that I'm currently using uh, that I use to attach my handles will blend in nicely with the bag liner that I have. So go ahead. Set your stitch length on your machine to a longer stitch, either four and a half or a five. Basting just kind of temporarily holds all of these layers together. Um, you're not going to backstitch this at all. We're just going to do a quick little seam as close as we can to this top edge, making sure we catch all three layers the best you can. Some people don't um, like to baste stitch. It's something I always do. I feel like it always just holds things together better. Again, it's personal preference. You don't have to do that. You're going to want to be careful just to ease this around. Just go slow. 
you just want to make sure you're catching all of those edges. Again, you're not going to want a back stitch here. This is going to be a, a seam that if you end up seeing it, you can cut it and pull it out really easily. That line of stitching that I did, the stitches are really long, so it'll be really easy to pull it out if I need to. So go ahead and grab that binding strip that you made earlier, and we're going to attach that and finish up this bag. So this part of bag construction can be a little tricky for some people. Um, my advice for this is just really take your time. This is the last step of the bag. You really don't want to hurry it along. Um, so to attach this, I always like to go to one of my side seams. And if you're a quilter um, and you have a preferred method for attaching your binding, you can go ahead and do that. But this is the method I like to use when I'm attaching binding to my bags. You take that three inch strip that you pressed in half and you're going to find the center. Go ahead and take this raw edge of the strip and you're going to face that towards the raw edge. You're going to lay that raw edge up against the raw edge of the bag top. Take your center of that piece that you just found and you're going to go ahead and lay that on your bag side seam. Take a clip or a pin and you're going to clip. And you can clip and pin all the way around. And if you're not new to bag making, you don't have to clip this on at all. You can actually just sew it. You're going to want to stop so you have about a nine inch tail on that side as well as the other side. So go ahead and put a clip in there, flip it over from that seam that you started clipping at. You're going to go the other direction and clip this one as well. Make sure you Make sure you lay that binding nice and flat against that edge. Now you have these two really long tails. So before we do anything else, we're going to go ahead and start sewing at this clip and we're going to stop sewing at this clip. So the binding will be attached, but we'll have this big gap here. So go ahead, make sure you set your stitch length back to the standard stitch, which is either three and a half or two and a half, depending on your machine. And you're gonna stitch that down a quarter inch to attach your binding to the top of your bag. Okay, so now comes the tricky part. You're gonna wanna turn your bag so that way these two long ends are facing up. The huge gap that you haven't yet sewn, you can see, and you're gonna take these strips and you're gonna open them up. This is the part you wanna do really slow. You just wanna make sure these strips are not twisted. So if that was laying flat, it would look like that. That one is like that. You're going to match up the ends. So the back side of this strip is touching the back side of this strip. You're going to kind of find out if you were laying these flat where they would meet. And I always take a little pin. I don't use clips for this part because sometimes they can come off. And you're going to want to place a pin like that. So then you can kind of pull this up a little bit. 
open up those two fabric strips and you're gonna wanna pin in a couple of different places to make sure that these lay really flat while you're stitching. This long end should match up with this long end. And I use about three or four pins to make sure that this lays nice and flat. Okay. So this pin at the top that's facing this direction is going to indicate my line of stitching all the way down. So before you stitch this, you really want to just double check that when this is folded back up that there is no twists in it. If there is a twist in this fabric anywhere, you're going to see it and you're going to have to rip it out and do it again. So this is laying nice and flat. So let's go ahead and run a seam from this pin straight down to the bottom of this one, back stitching at both spots. And we'll go ahead and finish up the last step of this bag. You can mark it with a pen if you wanna make sure that that line is really, really straight. Um, I've never really had a problem doing it like this, but it's really what your comfort level is with sewing. Go ahead and put your foot down. Back stitch. Just sew the entire length, making sure you're not going to sew over those sewing pins. Remove that. So now is what you're going to want to do is kind of open up that bag. You're going to want to make sure that those fabric strips that you just sewed together are going to lay nice and flat against the exterior of that bag. Again, that they're not twisted. And if everything looks okay, you're gonna go ahead and take a pair of scissors or you can take this to a cutting mat and use a rotary cutter. And you're gonna wanna take and trim, leaving about a half an inch of fabric away from that seam that you just made. Then you're gonna wanna take your fingers, press that seam open so it lays nice and flat Again, you can iron this if you'd like. I usually just use my fingers. Press that seam. Nice and flat. Then you're going to take this raw edge and match it up with the other raw edge. You can give it a little press down here. Go ahead and stretch that bag out. Just like that. Now that binding is laying nice and flat. You don't have any open seams here, so go ahead, put this under your machine, and you're going to start sewing following that same line of stitching until it meets the other end where you started. Now go ahead and take this binding strip you just attached to your bag. You're going to flip it up and over towards the inside of your bag, like so, and you're going to clip. And you're going to do this around the entire top edge of your bag. So you can go around the top edge of your bag, flip this binding piece up, and then just go ahead. And start clipping and you're going to do this around the entire top edge of your bag then we're going to stitch it down and your bag is finished all right now you're going to take this to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch in the ditch and that just means you're going to sew right in that groove along the top edge this is going to catch it on the interior and it's going to hide the thread on the exterior so you don't see it when your bag's finished. So go ahead and stitch around the entire top of your bag right in that line.
All right. So your bag binding should be attached to your bag. And you've officially just finished constructing this round bottom bucket tote bag. Um, now would be a good time to go around and trim any excess loose threads that you may find. If you used a chalk marking pencil to do uh, your handle marks or your quilting lines and you see any of those, um, you can take the eraser end of that pencil and make sure you kind of just clean up your bag a little bit and erase those lines. But other than that, your tote bag is complete. Thanks for joining me for another sewing tutorial today. I hope you guys found this bag pattern fun and I will see you around for my next video.